Hello chaps and chapettes, and uh, my eyes are a little bit better now, but oh boy the retinas were burnt out by that sun. Uh, Gaijin, can you please make a sun that does not look like a nuclear burst please? Anyway, hello chaps and chapettes, and welcome to a look at the history of the Russian tank, the T-80. Now, of course, I'm not talking about the modern version. Um, as with most Russian vehicles, they like to make things as confusing and messy as possible. Just like one of these situations. Now a little history on the T-80. And for, well, that we need to look back to the tank it came from. With the basis of its design coming from the T-60 scan tank, uh, which of course was also the uh, not so well fated glider tank of the Russian Army, well, Air Force or whichever way you want to go, it was kind of Army Air Force combined. Uh, and the relatively new and advanced T-50, which was rather expensive to build, so the T-70 was born to be sort of both a scout and an infantry tank. The design was laid down in early 1941, a time in which the Soviets were in need of a versatile, fast-moving tank to try and counter the highly mobile German forces, and they had hoped the T-70 was that tank. But like most Soviet tanks of its era, it was a bit of a stopgap uh, measurement. With the famous T-34 still a little bit away from being deployed by Russia, uh, they needed a tank with this sort of light tank characteristic. Now, the T-70 did manage to take some impressive victories, but they kind of were a bit few and far between sometimes. It was a rather abysmal tank for the crew of two, and lacked a punch with its 45mm 20k main gun. Although, with its APC R-round loaded, it did manage to scalp a few Panthers in its day. Uh, most notably would be Sergeant Alexander Pegov, who stood up against an 18 tank strong column. He managed to ambush the leading Panthers and at around about 150-200 metres he opened fire, setting fire to the first one and immobilising the second one, thus blocking the road which allowed him to retreat and caused the Germans to lose some serious ground and let the Russians prepare for the advancing tanks. The T-70, despite being a light tank, had relatively good armour protection owing to its sloped front, giving it an effective 60mm of protection. However, weighing in at 9.2 tons and having a rather meagre pair of Gaz 202 truck engines to power it originally, uh, designed to sort of originally it was designed to have one engine for each track, so one engine either side of the vehicle powering a single track each. Even the Russians thought this was probably a bad idea and it's going to go very very wrong for them, uh, so they ended up fusing two of the six-cylinder. Uh, six cylinder gas 202 truck engines together and producing a 140 basic horsepower um, engine which while not a terrible power to weight ratio uh, for the time did mean uh, it meant it was a rather fast tank capable of up to 28 miles per hour on a flat road downhill with a tailwind but it wasn't very fuel efficient at all and only had a range of 220 miles which is pathetic and in a country as large and vast as Russia, you need a tank to be able to have good coverage. The biggest flaw of the T-70, however, was its cramped space, and the fact it was a single-band turret, meaning the commander had to, well, command, load, shoot, navigate, spot, take care of the odd engine issue. Uh, if, he, if he was in the command vehicle, he'd have to use the radio and all that kind of stuff. And th that made his life very, very hard and a little bit overworked, so to say. Despite this, uh, over 8,000 T-70s were actually made. Um, however, it did become apparent the tank was a little bit obsolete before it came into action, incurring extremely high losses in the first German assault of 1941. Uh, the tank was pretty much devastated by the Panzer IVs uh, and things like that. It really didn't hold up against them. And this is where the T-80 comes into being. Now, in an attempt to address the issues of the Formula 1 tank, the T-80 would have a new two-man turret. 
along with having the ability to elevate the gun much higher than its predecessor for urban combat and even low-flying aircraft. However, these changes caused new issues. The T-70 hull simply was not capable of the larger turret and the extra weight it would add, so the Object 080 was drawn up and the new designs were worked out. The hull was made a little wider to implement the new turret ring, a larger turret of course, a slightly more powerful gas 203F engine was used, again with two paired up, so uh, two six cylinder inline engines paired up to make a 12 cylinder engine, giving the tank 107 BHP. However, it would be used sort of um, due to the increased weight and the fact there was an extra human on board. It was a slightly larger tank, it had better armour, the tank ended up having a top speed of just 26 miles per hour, a range of 216 miles, worse than its predecessor, uh, which was kind of the point of making the tank because they wanted it to be faster and better. Slightly less than its predecessor, it, it, really, um, it really didn't get off to a great start. The paired engines proved to be less than stellar and they had quite a lot of reliability issues at the start and this meant production was not fully able to go ahead until 1943. So that's a long time into the war you have to remember. And by this stage of course the T-34s were being built. Weight had reached up to 11,600 tonnes, uh, mainly owing to its thicker armour and this is a key point to this tank, uh, as well as the the armament was actually kept the same, 47mm 20, 20, 20k main gun uh, with a 7.62 coaxial. Uh, a new lower front plate was used with 45mm steel giving the crew much better protection from mines and shells landing underneath the tank. Uh, this was experience they had gained through the war. A slight redesign to the plate as well gave the tank uh, the same good protection as its predecessor, along with now having the the extra hand in the tank command for the commander to have a little bit less stress, you know, meaning he had somebody he could rely on to load the gun and help out. However, with the advent of the legendary T-34 tank, it had better mobility, speed, armour, firepower, and uh, basically took the light tank out of existence for the Russians. Uh, the T-80 was really the last light tank the Russians built in World War II, the last scout light tank they built, and with only 80 made it was kind of a bit of a, a little bit of a failure you could say. Although it was a very good tank for its time, times had changed and the T-34 really showed that. You know when you have things like the Tigers, the Panthers coming in, the T-80 was not up to their standards. So in game, well the T-70 and T-80 are two of the best low BR tanks in the game and they're a great way to learn to play ground forces. I've made a video on this before and uh, I think it's personal quite a bit, uh, but I think these two light tanks are some of the best tanks to start with in the game as they have okay speed, an okay gun, good penetration values, actually got some good armour which will sort of bounce those 20mm autocannon rounds which can be so devastating to most tanks uh, as well as um, cause a few issues to lower calibre guns um, things like the the 50mm gun on the Panzer Freeze for instance will have trouble with you uh, of course the heat shell will basically murder you you've not got a chance with the heat shell but if they're using anything else sometimes you will be protected with 60mm of penetration you've also got a very good shell to stop so the armour piercing high explosive ballistic cap shell is, is very good and the shell you, you'll use most of the time in honesty it is your stock shell with the T-80 being a rank 2 tank it means you also have the ability to scout and of course help unlock planes a bit quicker than that if you wish Although a little taller than the T-70 and a little slower, the tank still has good enough speed and maneuverability to make it worth using. The beauty of this tank is its armour, and the fact you can withstand salvos from 20mm and even bounce a few shells as the same from the medium calibre guns, the German 50 and even the 75mm are actually at range. Uh, you do need to take care around British tanks due to their armour piercing shells and the aforementioned heat shell, but those are really the only drawbacks. You know, the only other thing really is the slow turret rotation. 
Um, that's really the weak point of those tanks. But other than that, these things are absolutely fantastic and they're very enjoyable to play. As you've seen in this match, it's gone quite well. The first tank I was using was actually the T-80. The T-70 is, uh, is this tank I'm in now. And the front armor will just bounce so much. You, you can really do so much in this thing. So we've got a Tiger... Sorry, not Tiger. But turning into a normal tank and now I'm saying everything's Tiger. A uh, Panther... I'm oh, sorry, Panther even. A Panzer three, I think it was. Um, but we're bouncing these shells, you know, and that's the thing, if they're using the armor cap, armor ballistic cap shells, things like that, you will bounce a few rounds. Of course, you're not invincible, and the rear end of this tank is quite easy to get destroyed, side shots can be quite devastating, but you're very survivable. And that's the end of that match for the tanks. So let's just head to the hangar quickly. Okay, so we're in the hangar now, so let's just have a quick look at these vehicles as they are. So we'll start with the T-70, uh, which is a rank 1 Russian tank. You get it after the T-60, the, the, the previous version, one should say. Uh, the T-60, I didn't go into too much detail about today because, well, it, it's a very different tank altogether. It, it's a bit bit different again, uh, but a very similar pr principle. You know, the basics are the same, the, the twin engine design, the single turret. Although this one has a auto cannon, a 20 mm auto cannon, which does reduce some of its uh, reduce some of its uh, ability. The arm is very different as well. So if we look at the T70 right here, you'll see straight away. If we just click to a different camouflage, get all the trees and stuff off, you can see straight away that sloped front plate uh, before the T34. Yeah, weird. It's almost like sloped armor existed before the T34. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> going off on one there, uh, but as you can see that sloped front plate armour is fantastic. The other thing advantage for the T-70 is actually the front mantlet. You've got a 50mm front mantlet on the gun, which means you've got 50mm of armour effectively. It's very good frontal armour for this thing, the turret is very good, well armoured, it's very good indeed. The front plate, as you can see, you know, if you're sort of slightly angled, things like that, you, you get some really good armor, armor values on this thing. It, it is a very trolly tank, and people will struggle because they can't really hit... Front on, for instance, there's not anywhere you can really hit as a weak spot. Um, pretty much the cheeks are the weakest points, and as you can see, they're not that weak at all. Um, you could possibly bounce a shot underneath the mantle as well, but, but those are your only sort of choices, and that's what makes this tank so good is the trolley armor, but mainly in a down tier. If you're in an up tier, you're gonna struggle. Uh, then of course we have the T-80. And the T-80, I adore this thing. This is possibly one of my favorite, just sort of, um, just sort of basic tanks in the game. It's just very fun to play. So let's just go to the winter camouflage again. And as you can see, that front plate, very much the same. There is a slight change in the driver's hatch though, and this is a weak point on the tank. Uh, so if you look here, you can see that there is that little lip here, and that reduces that effective armor. And that's probably one of the worst things about this tank, is that weak spot. Also the fact the turret isn't quite as strong. It's still pretty trolly. Um, you still will bounce a lot of shots in it. But it does have that little bit of a weaker spot here. So usually covered up by bushes so people can't pinpoint it, and then you're fine. The side armor is not great, but again, it's enough to usually stop uh, sort of at least 50 caliber rounds so it will stop general ordnance for you and sort of rifle caliber rounds don't have a chance of penetrating you at all and that's what makes this tank so good also the deck armor as well is you know 15 millimeters is nothing to sniff at you know you're, you're going to stop rifle caliber rounds you're going to stop 50 caliber rounds generally because nobody comes in sort of straight down of course they're angled so it's very rare that you will get penetrated usually the the most common spot is just at the back here uh, but if you look here, it's just a radiator and a fuel tank. So it's nothing that's going to cripple you too much because the engines are in the front. As we saw in the game, the transition, uh, the transmission will save you as well because that's going to absorb shots. So again, it works very, very well. And you can just see how cramped this tank is as well. With two men in there, it's, it's not a fun turret to be in. I don't imagine this thing was uh, particularly loved by its crews because it does not look very comfortable to ride in. The other thing as well is it didn't have a turret basket, so when the turret rotates, the people have to rotate with it, and that often caused many issues. Uh, not a fun thing to have, not a fun place to be. 
Now, just one last thing before I finish up today. I hope you found the video informative for one and handy and enjoyed it because I've got a lot of new subscribers. Um, over the weekend, uh, Ash, you probably know him if you've watched any War Thunder stuff. Um, Ash, Ash's channel, check him out if you don't know. Look up Ash, War Thunder. Uh, he gave me a shout out over the weekend and I gained 100, subscri 100 subscribers in a weekend and I was jaw dropped. So first of all, thank you to all the new subscribers. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoy my work and I hope you enjoy a lot of the back catalogue as well. There's lots of stuff from the past on my channel. Um, I, I do keep new content, so don't worry, it's not going to stop, but there is a lot of back catalogue, so feel free to have a look in that and have a look in the history of section. Uh, there is a playlist and basically reviews like this where I go through the history of a vehicle as well as talking about, you know, it in game and stuff like that. That's something that I'm very proud of and I do enjoy the history of reviews. I, I've made a few and I really like them. I sort of did a recent one for the Swordfish, which I'm quite proud of. Uh, but history is my main passion. I love going through history and if I can help you learn something new, then all the better. So anyway, big huge to thanks to Ash and a huge thanks to everybody for joining and I will see you all next time. Have a good day. Bye bye.